You know, usually it is old school RuneScape who looks at RuneScape 3's new updates and thinks to themselves, you know what, we'll just copy that and rename it and put it in our game. But this time it's the other way around. In 1 hour and 35 minutes, as you can see people in my clan is typing out, the Inferno, which is of course an old school RuneScape high tier PVM challenge, is coming out in RuneScape 3 and we are going to take a look at it see if we can actually complete it. There is going to be normal mode and hard mode. I want to try to complete normal mode in this video and uh, then I will probably make an attempt at hard mode and see how hard it actually is. And here we are in the Sox Chamber. It has literally the same name as an old school as well. And here are the minions. Now I actually want to run around a bit because most of these minions are probably going to be in the cave. These ones are old ones, that's just the majors. These are the rangers the small melee minions i don't see any new type of minions and uh, here oh my god here he is look at that that is the boss itself do i talk to him to start the fight i would assume that's the case yeah chat 14 000 level you know what that means the effigies in the game is actually dropped depending on the combat level of the monster. The Arc Glazor is level 7000 and is a very good way of farming effigies. This guy drops probably twice as many as that, or maybe even more. So that this might be a good way of getting effigies. Before we go in, let's actually have a look at the rewards. So let's see here first, Obsidian Blade is the new tier 95 weapon, it looks like the boss is holding. This Magma Core is the thing you upgrade the cape with, I would assume. Ancient Hilt, I have no idea what that is. Igneous Stone, no idea what that is. Actually, these three items are probably the cape upgrades, all of them, all the three. Then we have Magma Tempest Ability Codex, which is just probably an ability hands in codex the scripture of fool which is one hit has a 6.6 percent .6 chance to activate that is a pretty high chance actually for 15 seconds increase damage dealt by 20 percent and damage taken by 10 percent that seems really good honestly that sounds extremely good for dps and the uh Tsar Kalsuk armor piece is definitely the pet. Okay, so we're in the normal session now and I am on wave 2. The first one was extremely easy, but uh, actually took quite a lot of damage from the first minions. But uh, I'll actually show this entire wave, the second one, because I want to show you guys how the first waves would look. And oh my god, there is so many minions. But uh, of course, I have the Chinchompas, I might want to stack them up and actually use those. Let's see if that's going to be pretty useful. And uh, do I hit multiple ads here? Yeah, I definitely do. So let's see if we can one shot them. Boom, all of those are dead. And there is going to be, I think, 17 waves. So it is not like the old school Inferno with like 60 waves or something. So this is a lot shorter. Another thing I'm kind of assuming here, I'm not 100% sure how it works, but you see these volcanic geysers around the map. They actually erupt randomly. You see this one as well. If you stand on them, I would assume that you're going to take a lot of damage. Now there's two up at the same time, so I think the strategy is literally just do not stand on them. I'm thinking that these creatures is like a DPS check, because they heal quite a lot actually, like frequently when you attack them, and I don't think there is a way to stop that. Maybe it is, of course, this is just my first attempt, but um, you actually get a buff when you kill them. So if I kill this one here, I already have one stack of it, you can see there. It just says the energy flows through me, but I don't know what that means. But let's just kill this quick. You see your body absorbs some of the energy, so maybe that is... I'm not sure actually what that is, I guess we'll see. Oh, it's an extra button. Let's look at this. Once charged up with enough ingenious energy, you can unleash it towards Suck to stagger and then attack him. No way. So if I press this, what happens? Oh, I actually can attack him now. So it's like, wait, no way. Is this actually how it works? Attack him? So he does nothing now. And I just press the button and this is like f my DPS time interesting how long will i actually be able to do this for let's see oh that was very short okay so i guess you just get small amounts of damage out on him in that window i wanted to reset my inventory and just bring different items and i also forgot weapon poison so i wanted to just reset everything and go out because i also remember that after a certain checkpoint which i assume is when i dps suck you actually get loot for that and i wanted to see how much loot you get for only doing the first four waves this is the answer 2.8 million 
And uh, that is not bad. Let's see, you get Quorms, some uh, Onyx Ball Tips, Alchemist's Key? What even is that? I will have to look into that, but that's kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, this is the loot, not bad. Oh, I know how to deal with these now. They actually can be stopped with a heal. If you stun them, they don't actually heal anymore. I just randomly shot out a stun, and you can see this bar here. I guess uh, it doesn't actually heal during that time, which is very nice. It was such a struggle to kill them before, actually, but yeah, that's pretty easy. And now let's see the DPS time again. I guess I'm just going to run up to it, going to uh, Death Swiftness, and now I pop this and just try to do as much damage as possible. I think that's the strat. Okay, what is this? Uh, the second time I actually stunned him on wave 5, uh, he spawned this circle. So I guess I just have to stay in this area and kill these. Doesn't seem that hard to be honest, they're very low level. Uh, but maybe they explode and do damage after a certain time? Doesn't seem like it's that bad actually. So I'll just kill those and let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, they definitely uh, explode after a certain time. So that is a DPS check as well. Oh, and that is also the checkpoint, so, okay, that is a Jad, uh, I'm going to teleport out now, because I think you can, let's see, if I teleport out, you can return and continue from this point. And yeah, I could just go back and restock and super easily just come back here and uh, start off where I was, so it should be a lot easier now, but there's only one Jad now, of course there's a lot of, lot of other creatures as well, but I think it should be pretty easy, oh my god, I am taking so much damage! What is this? I probably have to save spot around the corner here, to be honest. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back here and finish that off this way. Okay, this is insane. I am taking so much damage and I just got destroyed. This is kind of hard, I'm not gonna lie. This is <laughs> definitely a challenge. And this is the loot that we got from doing that. And we got three alchemist key this time. So I am, of course, assuming that that's a pretty common drop. Also, Cadentines, that's a good herb actually to get. They're kind of annoying to get. Uh, reed seeds, I'm not sure what that even is. One actual manuscript of full. So yeah, not the best drops, but still not bad for just doing the first five waves. Oh, no way! I thought it would have to restart now that I died, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I can just start right away from where I was. That makes this quite a lot easier, actually. I just got everything stuck this time, so you can see I am not really taking that much damage at all compared to how much I was taking before. You definitely have to use these vents to uh, make them stuck like this to be able to survive, because I didn't do that before and I died in like one second from half HP. So around wave 7, these guys will spawn and they get a stacking buff here. You can see it says grounded. Each stack increases their damage by 1%. If they stand still for a long time, they will just blast you. But if you move them around, they will lose the stack and you can uh, tank them a bit easier. And the next unique creature, by the way, I'm going to die here, is uh, this one, Ingenus Tech Chill. If you use a uh, threshold on them, you can see here they are made more vulnerable, so that is a good way to kill those. So you need to use a threshold on them before you actually go for the kill. But uh, yeah, this is going to be very unfortunate because I might die just before a checkpoint, but maybe I can cheese this out. Oh, never mind. It's not the checkpoint on wave 9. It's probably on like 10 or something. I, I think that's the case. Managed to reach another checkpoint and I think the reason why I actually made it this time is because I was safe spotting around the stones a lot more as well as I brought a yak and that helped me out a lot. I don't think Reaper Demon is the play because you just have to basically survive enough waves that you uh, get to the checkpoint and then you can TP out. Oh nice, I actually got an onyx from uh, just doing those waves so guess I'm banking that and let's continue. So probably as you already saw, there is actually two Jads in this wave. So this is going to be a bit interesting. I am definitely going to just save spot around here and uh, I will try to kill one at a time. That is probably the way to do it. But uh, yeah, let's see if that's going to be possible. Maybe I have to run over to these rocks or something and try to save spot that way. Actually, I can do it this way. Oh, this is fine. I'm happy with this. Here we have them, the classic major minions that probably hit like a truck. So using magic prayer here is definitely the play. They also put a bleed on you that you have to use freedom to remove. Unfortunately, I, d I don't have freedom right now. I used it on the last one, so uh, you're going to have to take some damage from this dot here, I would assume. 
Now the third interesting minions here that you also have to do a specific mechanic to break down or make, you know, DPSable so they don't spam heal like the other ones. The first one of course being the stun one, the second one being the threshold one, and this one has a shield around it and all you had to do was just walk into the shield. So it is kind of annoying that you have to run all the way there and kind of put yourself in a bad position, but it is a very easy mechanic I would say. So this is how it looks like when I go into the shield, I start DPSing and there you go. The attack has lowered the barrier and now I can just destroy it. I actually wonder what happens now because this is the third checkpoint and uh, it is way 14. And it should be another one of these weird mini games I have to do now. Or maybe there's going to be- yep, there we go. So uh, let's see what this is. Okay, so there- these are the healers I think. Oh my- what?! Uh, I... Wh uh, what? What do we even do there? I just got destroyed. I will have to look at that again, okay? I checked the recording on that one. So I asked these guys here and they said that it's prayer flicking, but you can also use barricade and they will just kill themselves, I guess. So that is probably the play there. Doesn't seem too hard. Okay, let's see how this works now. Just going to equip my shield and let's barricade now. Not taking any damage. And I'm assuming that, let's see, ranged, I would be praying ranged there, and this one I don't really know, I can't... Oh, I actually made it, I think. So, good. We got the checkpoint done and barricade was all I had to do. And three jads now, <laughs> very interesting. I actually think this is the last wave, I think 17 is actually suck, so this should be interesting. We got the first, okay, I think we got this now. This should be easy. The first two was the hard part, I guess. Now it's just kill the ones uh, individually. What is going to happen now? I'm so interested in what's going to happen. Do I fight suck now? And how is the fight actually going to be? Oh yeah, this is definitely the uh, Horaken? Okay, I uh, guess I'm fighting Horaken now. Interesting, do I have to kill the tentacles? I guess I have to. Not sure. Oh, maybe not actually. The boss is taking quite a lot of damage, but uh, the hands are probably going to uh, destroy me. It is blocking damage, so maybe it is blocking damage because I haven't killed the tentacles yet. But maybe you can do it without killing them. Guess we'll see. It is taking quite a lot of damage. It is actually a pretty simple fight. You can just run around and kill the tentacles when the hurricane actually dives down in the lava, which he does after, I would assume, either a certain amount of time or a certain amount of HP. And then you get bombarded now and then when running around after he has uh, dove into the lava. You literally just avoid it like that. Super easy. And uh, when he's down, I'm taking the chance to DPS the tentacles. And the damage is not actually that high. I mean, it is very manageable. So this is just a theory, but I'm assuming that the boss actually takes less damage the more tentacles that are up, because it is blocking a lot of the damage now when there's a lot of tentacles up. But uh, it should die here, and let's see if there's actually a checkpoint after this. If not, it is actually kind of hard, because then you're going to have to kill both Horaken and the uh, actual Suck himself in the same uh, run without banking. So let's see what actually is going to happen now when I kill it. There is a checkpoint. Okay, so this is now the fight. I theoretically probably should teleport out, but uh, you know what? I'm just going to stay here and see what happens. Okay, removes all the things. Probably pray melee here. And uh, that's. I, I have only Saradome Bruce left, so uh, I'm probably going to die like right away. But uh, let's see if we can actually see some abilities. That nah, didn't get to see much. So, let's now talk about the actual final fight. Now, how this works is that you're going to have to pray melee for most of the fight because he hits very hard with melee, but he also has two debuffs he can put on you. The first one being a simple fire dot that you can just freedom and he won't apply it until you have freedom again. So that is a very easy mechanic. It is the same as the mage minions during the phases, the different waves. Then he also has a searing pain debuff that has 15 stacks and it drains your max HP so if you don't remove it you're going to get absolutely demolished by his high hits as well as it takes a very high magic damage consistently. 
how you remove this is you have to move around you just walk around in the area and it is going to lose you stacks over time so it is a pretty easy mechanic to deal with but if you do not deal with it you are going to get absolutely demolished so the next mechanic he has is a very much the same mechanic as one of the rex matriarch bosses has i don't remember the name of it but it's the one you mage it is going to slam his weapon into the ground spawn a bunch of earthquakes and really all you have to do is just avoid them if you're standing them i think you it reduces the uh, armor you have so you will take a bit more damage from the boss but it is a pretty simple mechanic just do not stand in the earthquakes or you go you're going to take damage now for the big finale ability he will say the sky burns and he will walk into the middle of the arena he will put you in a corner stun you and then he will spawn fire across the entire platform except for one area which he will also spawn one of the more unique minions in and they have the three different ways you have to deal with them so the first one you have to stun the second one you have to use a threshold on and the third one you have to walk into the shield to disable it you have to kill them in time because if you do not kill them in time or you walk on the fire you will first off the fire will kill you in like one second it takes 4000 every 0.6 seconds so you will get completely destroyed if you're standing in the fire but if you also do not kill the minions in time you won't get a button like you got before that allows you to stun the boss to counter a one shot so you actually have to have the movement to get there so you don't die from the fire and you have to have the dps deal with the minions fast enough click the extra button and it will stun the boss and you can continue the fight and this is where it pretty much just rotates the abilities i've talked about hey oh so close no oh i know what to do now i know what to do now this is easy and here we go, this is the kill. It should be at least, unless there is another face. Let's talk to him. Impossible. Let's see what happens. Can I just leave now? Am I actually done? Let's try to leave. Leave now, I guess. Let's see what happens. And uh, let's loot the chest. I am expecting it to be in here, the cape upgrade. Let's see what, what we get. And there is no cape upgrade. Really? So you don't always get it. Is that the, is that the case? This is a lot of alkyballs, by the way. So uh, like 125k each. So that's like, what, 3 million? But no cape upgrade. Wow, interesting. Oh my god, there is no way. I looked it up. It says that you must clear the entire encounter without using a single checkpoint to get the Ingenus Stone, which is probably the thing, yeah, it is the thing that upgrades the capes. That's kind of insane, actually, because even this was kind of hard to do. I had to bank like three times, four times, you know, every checkpoint. Now that I have some experience, of course, I can maybe do it easier, but it's still pretty insane. Like, you take a lot of damage doing this, so uh, ah, that's kind of interesting. That is going to be a very hard thing to unlock for most people, I would assume. Now, two things I want to do before I end this video, because I'm pretty happy with just getting one kill. Grinding it out is going to take a very long time, and I hope you guys found some information that is going to help you to actually clear it yourself in this video. But the two things I want to do is... This is the alchemist's chest, which I got a bunch of keys for, and it is like a crystal chest, I was told. So let's see what is going to be in... What?! Dude, what is this reward? No way. These are so bad. Five snakeskin hide? Oh my god, what is this? This is so bad. Cave nightshade. That is made to be, uh, you use those for like weapon poisons, but oh my god, this is terrible. I wonder what the best thing you can get from this is. Doesn't seem like it's going to be very good anyways, but at least you can... Oh, Carantine Seeds, that's not that bad. But the other thing I want to do is I want to get 1000 Anima for my ring and see what the bonus is, because maybe that bonus is going to help a lot when uh, doing the Inferno run. Can someone tell me what I'm even looking at right now? What is this? So just getting some more of that anima, but if you're wondering, you cannot start at the boss every single time. When you have killed the boss, you have to start all the way from the beginning again, so it is impossible to only farm the last boss. I mean, I'm getting to like close to the second checkpoint if I'm using a Reaper Demon and then I'm out of food. And if you want to do this, actually getting the cape upgrade, you will have to do all the waves plus three jazz, of course, Hurricane, and then suck himself with only one inventory of food. 
So that is definitely going to require a pack mammoth or pack yak. I don't think it's going to be possible with a reaper demon unless you're a very high tier player and maybe use magic instead of ranged because magic has the blood barrage spell that can heal you a bit as well. So you're going to have to use very good defensive abilities. I'm probably just going to die here. And also, yeah, you just have to be pretty good at the game to be able to get this cape. This absolute beast right here, of course, with the uh, attack. This beast abs. This absolute beast here with the new ranged cape. I realized you have to do it with ranged melee and magic, so your style doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, that cape looks pretty nice. It is very strong as well, so congrats to him. So I charge the ring and it says in the chat here, return with your completed Shadow Pontifex ring to this guy at the Centerstein Cathedral with 5,000 of each fact faction's essence to make the effect a passive. So that is kind of interesting, but let's see what the new effect is. Investigate, go all the way down, full effect. Incoming damage from gazers is reduced by 25%. That sucks. That is really bad. I mean, I don't think I barely took any damage from the gazers, so uh, well, that's kind of redundant. But I'm going to end the video here. I am super stoked about this update. It was really fun to run through it once, and I can just imagine the challenge it is to do this without checkpoints. I mean, I feel like you definitely need full tier 90s, maybe even tier 92 weapons, but it is meant to be a end game challenge, so it makes sense that it is very difficult. Of course, there might be a lot of things I didn't think about doing, maybe better safe spots that makes it a lot easier, but it was nonetheless very fun to try out for the first day. Hope you guys did enjoy the video remember to leave a like if you like the video subscribe if you want to see future content and i am back on my group iron man for the next video